So where can you find the code narrator? Well, it's really easy to find. When you're in Epic, you're simply going to take your mouse. You're going to go to the upper right hand corner. Click this upside down triangle. You're going to scroll down and you're going to select code documentation. And then you will be taken to the code narrator. Now this is the code narrator. It's also called code documentation. Now how do I navigate the code narrator? There's a lot of things that are here. Well, to make it really simple, we just want to use the items that are located on the left side of the screen. So for example, you're going to have a section for staff members. This allows you to document all the staff members that were in the code. Next, this section is called the code documentation section. Essentially, it's a list of items that we need to complete to ensure that we hit all the major points for documenting a code, such as when the code started, treatments that were done prior to the patient's arrival, but this is only for the ED only, vital signs, rhythm, interventions, code outcome, and code end. These are the key things that we need to complete to ensure that we're documenting everything that we need to document for a code. As we continue down, the next section is going to be the medications section. And I find this to be a very useful section because it lists in alphabetical order all the emergency medications that we could potentially give during a code. And this helps us document those medications. As we scroll down, we see another section called MAR. Um, the MAR contains all the medications that have been ordered for the patient throughout their stay in the hospital. Um, I don't find this section uh, particularly useful. Um, I'm usually not administering any of these medications during a code. We're only administering the emergency medications in this list. So what I do is I just minimize this section. As we go down, the next section that we find is the existing LDA section. And essentially this list provides any peripheral IVs or any other type of line that was placed in the patient prior to the code. The next section that we come upon is gonna be the IV section. And this section allows you to document peripheral IVs, temporary central lines, and PICs that were placed during the code. The next section is going to be the tube section. And this section allows you to document any NG or OG tube, chest tube, gastrostomy or enterostomy tube. As we continue down, the next section you'll find is the drain section. And the drain section allows you to document any urethral catheter, any closed suction drain, or colostomy. The airway section will allow you to document any ET tube, any surgical airway, or non-surgical airway that was placed during the code. The wound section will allow you to document any wounds, incisions, or negative pressure wound therapy that occurred during the code. The quick notes section will allow us to write a nursing note and allow us to document any glucoses that we obtained during the code. The post-mortem section will allow us to document when a patient expires. The quick bar allows you to document vital signs in real time. I never document my vital signs in real time during a code. I always document my vital signs after the code ends. I'll be using instead this vital signs section on the left side to document my vitals. Since I find this section to be not very useful, I'm going to minimize it. This section here 
is where all of our documentation will be located for a code. This documentation will be in chronological order. And you'll see how that looks like as I start documenting a simulated code. 